for circuit number one, you have a parallel component of 10 ohms. And so when you're figuring out your resistance of the parallel component, you can say 1 over R equal to 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15. So when you calculate that out, you can just do that. You don't need any parentheses. You do that, you get 0 0.16 repeating. And so when you take 1 over that, use the answer button in your calculator. So go 1 divided by answer, and it gives you a nice, neat 6 ohms. So to get your total resistance then, step 2 then is to take and say the 6 ohms that you just got, and then there's another 2 ohms in your resistor, and that gives you a total of 8 ohms for your total resistance. then asks for your total current. Well, we know that I is equal to V over R. And so we'll say our total voltage is from the battery of 12 volts. And the resistance that we just got here is 8 ohms. And so we have 1.5 amps. So, so far in this first circuit, we have our resistance of the parallel component added to the 2 ohms of the individual component, and so we have 8 ohms total. And then we have, um, with our 12 volt battery, we end up with 1.5 amps. The next thing we need to do is to figure out the voltage drop across each part. and so. We can take the 2 ohm resistor and we can say V equals IR and we'll use our 1.5 amps from the current that's going through that. It has not split yet so it's the whole 1.5 and then 2 ohms and so 1.5 times 3 gives us 3 volts across the 2 ohm resistor there. We know that we have a total of 12 volts in our battery, so we can say 12 volts minus 3 volts equals 9 volts across the parallel component. So the 2 ohm resistor has a voltage drop of 3 volts. The parallel component has a voltage drop of 9 volts. Then we can use those 9 volts to figure out the current in each part of that parallel component. So we have 9 volts divided by 10 ohms, 0 0.9 amps. 9 volts divided by 15 ohms, 0 0.6 amps. If you add these two, 0.9 plus 0.6, it gives you the 1.5 amps that we have total. So the 1.5 amps splits into the 0.9 and the 0.6 for the parallel component. Lastly, is determining the power for each one. So when we have the power, we have P equals IV. So we have our 2 ohm resistor, our 10 ohm resistor, and our 15 ohm resistor. The current in the 2 ohm resistor is 1.5 amps times the voltage drop of the 2 ohm resistor, which was 3 volts. 1.5 times 3 gives us 4.5 uh, watts Sorry, in the from that individual resistor. Now we can look at the ones that we have for the 10 ohm resistor. Our current in the 10 ohm resistor was 0 0.9 amps times the voltage drop in the parallel component of 9 amps, 0 0.9 times 9 is 8.1 watts and in the 15 ohm resistor we have a current of 0 0.6 amps and we still have um, 9 volts on volts being dropped across there and so 6.6 .6 times 9 gives us 5.6 watts so that's how you set up and work through number
number two, you have a similar setup to what we've already done, except now you have two separate resistors that are independent of the parallel component. So you still start with the same situation of figuring out your parallel component. So we have 1 over RT is equal to uh, 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15. And when we do that, we end up with 0 0.16 repeating. And that ends up giving us the resistance of the parallel component is 6 ohms. And we did that same part on the, on the first problem. But now for solving the second part where we get our total resistance, we have the 6 ohms of the parallel component. We also have 5 ohms of that resistor and 3 ohms of another resistor. So in the part that behaves as series, we have two separate resistors that are in there. So 6 plus 5 is 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have 14 ohms for our total resistance on the circuit. We still figure out our current in the same way. The only difference so far is that we have this extra resistor that's on there. So we still go through the same steps, still the same process, we just have a different, another resistor here. And so we'll figure out our current by saying I equals V over R. So on this circuit, we have a nine volt battery and we have a resistor of, or a total resistance of 14 ohms. 9 divided by 14 gives us 0 0.643 amps. Divided by 14. And that, that's a rounded number. It's 0.6428, and so we round this up to 0.643. The numbers on this one won't be as pretty as some of the other numbers that we've used. The fourth thing is to figure out our voltage drop. So we have three places that the voltage is going to drop. It'll drop on the 3 ohm resistor, it'll drop on the 5 ohm resistor, and it'll drop on the parallel component. And so we know that V equals IR, and so for the 3 ohm resistor, we can say our current of 0 0.643 amps times our resistance of 3 ohms. And we do the same thing for our 5 ohm resistor. The current remains the same. And we can calculate those out. So 0 0.643 times 3 gives us it's 1.929. I'm going to just round that to 1.93 volts there. 0 0.643 times 5. We'll have three point, it's 3.215, I'm going to round it to 3.22 volts. So the rest will drop over the parallel component. So I can take my total of 9 volts minus 1.93 volts minus 3.22 volts. Let's say 9 minus 1.93 and then minus 3.22 and I end up with 3.85 volts across the parallel component. So now I know my voltage drop across each one of these. So I know, I know my current and my voltage in both the 3 and 5 ohm resistor. I need to figure out my currents in the parallel component now. So in the parallel component, I know that I have a voltage drop of 3.85 volts, and I know that I have two different resistors, so I can say I equals V over R, and so we've got 3.85 volts divided by, my top one is 15 ohms, and then 3.85 volts divided by 10 ohms. So this one will be 0.385 amps. If I take 3.85 divided by 15, 0.256 repeating, so 257 amps. So if I add these two up, it would give me my total current there. We're really close to it. Sometimes when we're rounding, it, it ends up, one of them will round up and down or something that'll be a little bit off. So it should be pretty close to what we have here. Six is determining the power in each of the resistors. 
So I have four resistors here. I have a three ohm resistor, a five ohm resistor, 10 ohm, and 15 ohm. And so this is where having all of that information is important. In the three ohm resistor, it's the same as the current that's coming out of the battery. So I have 0.643 amps. Five ohm resistor is also that same current, 643 amps, because both of them are in uh, series with each other. The 10 ohm amp, I have a current, if I look up here, I have a current. So we know that P equals IV, and we'll use that to get the power through each of our resistors. We have a 3 ohm resistor, 5 ohm resistor, 10 ohm, and 15 ohm. And so we'll use IV on each one, but the currents and the voltages are different for each one. So the current through the 3 ohm resistor is the same as the current out of the battery, so 6, 4, 3 amps. That is the same current through the 5 ohm resistor because those two are in series. There's nothing that splits there for that. In the 10 ohm resistor, we calculated a current of 0.385 amps. And through the 15 ohm resistor, we calculated a current of 0.257 amps. Then we go back and add in our voltages. In the 3 ohm resistor, we calculated a voltage drop of 1.93 volts. In the 5 ohm resistor, it has its own voltage drop of 3.22 volts. In the 10 ohm resistor, we had 3.85 volts. And that's the same in the 15 ohm resistor because they are in parallel with one another. So we have each of these set up to figure out our, our power. So if we multiply them, so this circuit looks a little bit different than ones that we've seen before, but the general principles end up being the same here. And so if you follow along with the instructions for complex circuit practice problems, that's also found in the assignment. It says, number one, calculate the resistance of the parallel component. Remember to add the two resistors that are on the same line. So here's what happens in this one. This, it, when the current comes out of the battery, it goes over here, it comes through here. When it gets here, it splits and it either goes up there or it goes on this bottom path. If it goes on the bottom path, it encounters 10 ohms of resistance. If it goes on the top path, it encounters both the 25 and the 15. And so it encounters a total there of 40 ohms. So when we calculate the total resistance of the circuit, it doesn't, the voltage doesn't have any loss before it reaches the parallel component. So we have one over R, T is going to be equal to one over 10 for the bottom path, plus one over 40 for the top path because the current that goes through this top path encounters both of these for a total of 40 ohms. Gives us 0 0.125. And when we take one over that, we end up with eight ohms of resistance. So that is our total resistance on this circuit. Then it says to use the REQ, which is also the RT, the total, of the voltage of the bat and the voltage of the battery to calculate the total current. So we know that I is equal to V over R, and we know that the voltage on the battery is tw or 12 volts. It doesn't lose anything before it hits this parallel component. The battery sees this parallel component as 8 ohms. So 12 divided by 8 gives us current of 1.5 amps coming out of the battery here. The next step says that we'll calculate the voltage drop across each path, of, or so it says it tells us that the voltage drop across each path of the parallel component is equal to the voltage from the battery because there, is, because there are no other resistors in the circuit. So line three on those instructions 
we have the current coming out of here. The current that goes down on this path will drop all 12 volts with this resistor uh, because that's the only resistor on the path. The current that goes up here, it will drop all 12 volts from here to here. Some of that voltage will be dropped here. Some of that voltage will be dropped there. But for number four, it says use the voltage drop across the parallel component to calculate the current through each path. For the top path, use the, both, the resistance of both resistors added together. So for the bottom path here, we can say I is equal to V over R. We know that all 12 volts will drop along this bottom path. And the resistance, the only resistor that it encounters is the 10 ohm resistor. So we have 12 volts divided by 10 ohms. We have 1.2 amps that'll come along here. When we look at the top resistor, the current that goes along the top path of the parallel component experiences a total resistance of 40 ohms. So 12 volts will be dropped from here to here, and the resistance from here to here is 40 ohms. So we take our 12 volts divided by 40 ohms, and we get a current of 0 0.3 amps across the top of here. Number five says use the current for the top path to calculate the voltage drop across each component on the top path. So we know that from here to here we have 12 volts, and we know that we have 0.3 amps going through there. Some of the voltage will be dropped here, some of it will be dropped there. So we can calculate that. We can say V equals IR. And so the current in that top path we know is 0 0.3 amps. And we'll use the 15 ohm resistor. And 0.3 times 15 gives us 4.5 volts that'll be dropping across this one right here. And we can do that again. Again, we have 0 0.3 amps. And this time it'll be times 25 ohms. And when we get that, we end up with 7.5 volts. If we add these both up, 4.5 plus 7.5, that equals 12 volts. So if we go back to our larger picture here, current comes out of the battery, it approaches this. The current that comes down here only encounters the 10 ohm resistor and it drops all 12 volts there. The current that goes up here has 12 volts with it. When it encounters this first resistor of 25 ohms, it drops 7.5 volts. And when it encounters the second resistor there, it, in, it drops the rest, the 4.5 volts. So either path drops 12 volts, but because this path has two separate resistors on it, some of the voltage will drop here, some of the voltage will drop there, and that will total the 12 volts along that path. Lastly, it asks us to calculate the power, and so power is sort of a goofy one because we're looking at lots of different information. So we have three different resistors that we're dealing with. We have a 10 ohm resistor, a 15 ohm resistor, and a 25 ohm ohm resistor. And so we have to take the current, remember P equals IV, so we take the current in each one. The current in the 12 ohm resistor, sorry, in the 10 ohm resistor, the current on that path is 1.2 amps. And so we'll take the 1.2 amps times the voltage drop that we got across that resistance there. Um, that remember across here all 12 volts will drop and so we'll have that 1.2 amps times 12 volts gives us 14.4 watts. In the 15 ohm resistor we know that the current in the 15 ohm resistor is 0.3 amps and the voltage drop across the 15 ohm resistor is 4.5 volts. When we do this one the 25 ohm resistor, the current across this path here is still 0.3 amps, and the voltage drop is 7.5 amp volts. So we have 0 0.3 amps here, 7.5 volts here. And so when we calculate those, we take 0.3 times 4.5. Here we get 1.35 watts. 
And if we take 0.3 times 7.5, we get 2.25 watts. So that's, those are the pieces that we're looking at in number three. And the part about that that's different is that instead of having some of the, the having a resistor here that uses up some of the voltage as we've seen in some other ones, we have only a parallel path, but on one part of the parallel path, both of the resistors, there's two separate resistors. And so it, while the current remains the same, and while the voltage drop from here to here is the same as the voltage drop from here to here, some of that voltage drop happens here and some of it happens there. So for number four, you're setting up two parallel com components that are in series with each other. And so if we follow the current, the current comes out of here, it has to pass through here, and it has to pass through there. So in order to figure out our total resistance, we need to know the resistance of this component, and we need to know the resistance of this component, and then we can add them together. So in order to do that, we'll say that 1 over 8 plus 1 over 12, or 1 divided by 8 plus 1 divided by 12, we end up with 0 0.2083 repeating. And when we take, in order to get the total resistance for this component, we'll take 1 over 0 0.2083 repeating. 1 divided by, I'm going to use my answer button on my calculator for that. And it gives me a nice, neat 4.8 ohms. And so if you use, if you round this, it won't give you a clean answer. So just round to one decimal there. In the other one, we can take and do the same thing. And so we have 1 over 8 plus 1 over 24. And we get 0 0.16 repeating. Again, if you round it, it won't be quite as clean. But if you take 1, 0 over 1, 6 repeating, 1 divided by answer there, and you get 6 ohms for this one. And so. What this does for this, this problem is it sets up that the equivalent resistance of this ends up being 4.8 ohms. I'm going to write that just below here. And of the other one, it is 6 ohms. And so when the current comes out of the battery, it has to go through something of 6 ohms. It has to go through something of 4.8 ohms. And so we add those up. And so when we say RT is equal to 4.8 ohms plus 6 ohms, and it gives us 10.8 ohms total. So that is a total current, or total resistance for the circuit. So that's parts, part one was getting this, and part two is getting that. And it says use the REQ and the total voltage of the battery to calculate the current. So we can say here that I equals V over R. And so total voltage of the battery is 15 volts, Total resistance of the circuit we just calculated is 10.8 ohms. And if we take 15 divided by 10.8, we end up with, it's 1.38 repeating. So I am going to round this 1.39 amps. And the reason I round it is because it's going to carry through to lots of different places. So trying to keep all of it for all of them can be a little bit goofy. So now I know. I'll draw the current in here just to kind of keep things going here. I've got 1.39 amps coming out of here. I know that that's going to split and some of it will go up there and some of it will come down here. But I know over here it will come back together. Go in here, split again. It will split differently because there's different resistances on these. And so 8 and 12, it will split relative to that. And then 8 and 24, it will split relative to that. And then it'll come back around and go back here and back in there will be 1.39 amps. And so the next part says use the current to calculate the voltage drop across each component. Use the parallel component as a whole. So the answer is from number one. So we know that across here we have 4.8 ohms. So I can say V equals IR, let me change colors again. 
And so my current going into and out of this component here is 1.39 amps. It doesn't see it as eight, it doesn't see it as 12, it sees this as 4.8 ohms. So I'll multiply that times 4.8 ohms and I'll get the voltage drop across there. So 1.39 times 4.8, 6.672. I'll round that here to 6.67 volts. I can treat this in the same way. I can say V equals IR. The current coming into and out of there, 1.39 amps. And then the, the resistance that it is viewed at is six ohms. So I can take 1.39 times six and I get 8.34. So I have a voltage drop here of 8.34, 6.67 there. If you add them up, it comes up to 15.01, and that's just because we're rounding. So when I do this, there's 6.67, like that. The next part of what we have then, so we know, so here's what we know so far. We have 1.39 amps coming out of here. 1.39 amps approaches this. We know it splits comes back together. We don't know what those are yet. We'll calculate that next, but we know that this parallel component behaves as six ohms. So because this behaves as six ohms and we have 1.39 amps, that's where we can get the 8.34 volts that's being dropped across that component. The current continues. The rest of the voltage will be dropped here. We calculated that by taking the current of 1.39 amps times 4.8 ohms there to get 6.67 volts that it'll be dropping on that one. So now that we have that, um, now we can figure out the, we can use these voltage drops to figure out the current on each path. So I'm gonna switch to pink because I've got current up there in pink. And I can say I is equal to V over R and for this one, I have 6.67 volts divided by my resistance of 8 ohms. And then I also have same component, same parallel component, still drop 6.67 volts, and then over 12 ohms here. So if I take 6.67 divided by 8, I get 0 0.084, or sorry, 0.8. Sorry, it's 834 amps. And if I take 6.67 divided by 12, I get 0.5558. So I'll round that to 0 0.556 amps. And so when it splits and it comes to this point here, 0.834 is going up on this path and 0.556 is going down on that path. If you add these up, they should come up right around 1.39. If we come over to this path, we know that the voltage drop across there is 8.34 volts. So I can say I is V over R. This time I'm using the voltage drop that we have for this component. So 8.34 volts. I'll take that, um, divided by the resistance of eight ohms, and I'll get the current that's going up there. And here, again, 8.34 volt, volts divided by, this time I have 24 ohms. And so we'll get the current on each path. 8.34 divided by 8 gives us 1.0425, so I'll say 1.04 amps. 8.34 divided by 24. 0.3475, I'll say 0 0.35 amps. And again, if you add these up, 1.04 plus 0.35 will give you your 1.39. So there's a lot of kind of details to manage here with the different things that we have. And so we'll take, and the last part is we're calculating for power. And so I'm gonna do that below what I have here, just to kind of keep some consistency. And because I, can, I know that we 
can get each one of these. So remember that P equals I times V. So if we have, we have our different resistors, we have our 8 ohm resistor on one side and the 12 ohm resistor on that side, and the 8 ohm resistor on the other side, and the 24 ohm resistor on that side. And so if we take the 8 ohm resistor, so I'm going to start on the left hand side here, and I'm going to use this 8 ohm resistor and the 12 ohm resistor. I'll use the currents that I got here, and I know that I have a voltage drop of 6.67 volts. So if I have my currents in the 8 ohm resistor was 0.834 amps, and the voltage drop there was 6.67 volts. Here for the 12 ohm resistor, different current, but the same voltage drop. So here in the 12 ohm resistor, I have 0.556 amps, and then this time, still the same voltage, 6.67 volts. So I can get the power there. I'll calculate those in a minute. If we go to the other parallel component, I have 8.34 volts dropping across that component, and I have two different currents for that. So I'll have in the 8 ohm resistor that we got here, we had 1.04 amps. And then the voltage drop that we had there that we just talked about was 8.34 volts. Down on the 24 ohm resistor, it was a lot smaller, 0.35 amps. And when we multiplied that um, by the voltage drop that we had, 8.34 volts, we have that. So we can take and multiply these numbers together. 0.834 times 6.67. This one gives us 5.56 watts. 0.556 times 6.67 gives us 3.71 watts. 1.04 times 8.34. 8.67 watts, and all of these are rounded times 8.34, and we have 2.92 watts. And so again, as with all of these, it's, it's maintaining the organization of your information so when you get to calculating power, you can match the right pieces with the right uh, resistors. So that's what we're looking at here.